Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. So you mean to tell me all this stuff came out of that one little closet? Well, it didn't exactly come out. I dragged it out. All by yourself? No. He helped. <laughs> Some help. Well, I couldn't find the girls, and you were sleeping so sound. Oh, nonsense, Kate. Whenever there's work to be done, you go ahead and wake me up. I'll find the girls for you. <laughs> Thanks. And where are you going? Kitchen. I'm ready to eat. Always. But if you eat now, you'll spoil your supper. No, I won't. Oh, yes, you will, because I won't give you any. <laughs> Be reasonable, Kate. If I'm going to look for the girls, i got to stoke the old boiler. <laughs> <laughs> you just bring that old boiler over here. If you stoke it anymore, you won't be able to carry it. <laughs> Very funny. Now, come on. I'll explain my system to you. I have the girls' things in three piles. And Bobby Joe, Billy Joe, and Betty Joe. And this is yours. Who is this? Oh, that's the dogs. <laughs> hey, just a minute, you. You're putting that on the wrong pile. That's my slipper. Give me that. Grubby paws off my stuff. Hi, hey, Mom. Hi, Uncle Joe. Bobby Joe, where in the world have you been? Now, listen, I want you to yeah, get over the... It's about time you showed up. We've been looking high and low for you. I was swimming at the water tower. It was such a nice day. What's going on? What are you doing? We're cleaning the storage closet. Works, that's what's going on. Your mother and me have been about breaking our backs while you and your sisters are out lollygagging around. Speaking of lollygagging, where is Billy Joe? She's playing tennis with Ace Gunther. They took the train into Hooterville this morning. Tennis, swimming. Kate, you're raising a bunch of lazy girls. Yeah. I wonder where they get it. <laughs> Uncle Joe? Oh, never mind, Mom. I'll help. What do you want me to do? Well. First, I want you to go through your stack of junk and see if you can get rid of some of it. Oh, look! Here's my old ukulele. I wonder if I could still play it. Not without strings, is it? Oh. Some people just don't have any sentiment at all. Oh, I have plenty of sentiment. I just don't have any room. Mom, if all this junk came out of the closet, it'll all go back in. Yes, but you see, this is last year's junk. And if we keep it all, where are we going to put this year's junk? Hey, I got a great idea. Well, this has got to go. You're going to burn this? No, you're going to burn it. Kate, you haven't heard my idea. This is a valuable old antique. Well, it's old, but it isn't an antique, and it certainly isn't valuable. Kate, I'm surprised at you. You're not keeping up on your interior decorating. Now, to you, this is just an old piece of beat-up junk. To me, it's the inventory of a money-making antique shop. That was your great idea. Sure. Sometimes if the furniture don't look old enough, you take it out and bang it around until it has dents in it. This is what they call a distress finish. Well, you know I'm in style after all. Everything I own has a distress finish. <laughs> When you catch your breath, you can haul the rest of this stuff out. Hey, the train's in. Yeah. Later than usual today. I've been waiting for Betty Jo to get home from school. She's good health. Yeah, fine. Then you won't need me. Here, hold it. I'm going in the kitchen to get a cup of coffee and a piece of that blueberry pie. I'm saving that pie for supper. Besides, you just had a coffee break. That was my sandwich break. Now I'm taking my coffee break. 
Marco's a remarkable man. One day's work and he's ahead. Three weeks breaks. I just love the way you look in that T-shirt, Ace. And the way you serve that ball. Wow. Well, there's Billy Joe and Ace. I guess they were on the train, too. Yeah. Looks like I'm going to have a complete staff after all. Hi, everybody. We just had the most marvelous time. It was a perfect day for tennis, and they resurfaced the courts in Hooterville. For goodness sakes, this place looks awful. Yeah, I've been cleaning out the storage closet. Why in the world should you do that, Mom? Well, uh, it was this way. I had my choice of going to the races, uh, playing golf at the country club, having tea with Lady Bird, or uh, cleaning out the closet so naturally. Oh, Mother, you're such a character. You know Ace Gunther, don't you? Oh, of course I do. Hi, Ace. Hello, Mrs. Bradley. Uh, hi, Bobby Joe. Hi, Ace. I need your help, Billy Joe. You're just in time. Mother, please. I've got company. Well, that's wonderful. We can use another hand. And when Betty Jo gets here... You mean she isn't home yet? No. I, I, I thought she was on the train with you. Not unless she was running it. Well, that's it. Sure. She's in the cab with Floyd and Charlie. I just hope she hurries up. Meantime, I have to uh, see about supper. Well, if it ain't Miss Billy Jo Bradley, prominent sportswoman, just in from the links. <laughs> Hi, Uncle Joe. But you don't play tennis on the links. You play on the courts. Oh, they must have changed the rules. <laughs> Uncle Joe, this is Ace Gunther. Ace, this is my Uncle Joe Carson. How do you do, Mr. Carson? Sorry, right, son. You know anything about antiques? No, oh, sir. That's too bad. I was looking for somebody to help me out in my antique business. Oh? Come on, Ace. You must be dying of thirst. Yes, there's some nice ice-cold lemonade in the ice box. Oh, hi, boys. Where's Betty Jo? Tinkering with the train again? No, she didn't go on this run. And we held the train an extra 20 minutes. Well, I can't imagine what happened. She usually tells me when she's gonna stay late at school. We ain't seen her since this morning. I said to Floyd, she just didn't look like our little Betty Jo with her hair slicked up and makeup all over her face. And when I spoke to her, she didn't answer hardly at all. Just stared out into space, kind of dreamy-like, like her mind was on something far away. I could see right off she wasn't her normal self. Her <laughs> Moss, they ain't got brains enough to come out at night. Boys, did, did she say anything about doing something after school? I don't recollect she did. Oh, I thought it was kind of peculiar, her with that suitcase. Suitcase? Floyd. I told Charlie if it was anyone else but Betty Jo Bradley, I'd say she was running away from home. Running away? Yeah. You know, like that Perkins girl over in Pixley last month, run off to the county seat and got married, and she was a year younger than Betty Joe. Why, Betty Joe wouldn't... Or that Walker girl from Crowell Corners last year, hitchhiked halfway to Hollywood, California, before they caught up with her. Floyd, will you shut up? You got a mouth like a cellar door. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> Dumbbell, can't you see that Kate's pretty near worried to death without you making it any worse? Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not worried. Why... Betty Joe's too sensible to do a thing like that. No. No, I'm, I'm not worried. And why are you sweeping the dog? I'm not. But <laughs> sure, we'd find a note. Lots of times when she's gonna stay late at school, she leaves me a note. It isn't under there, but I found this. Yes, sir. Her diary, I wonder where she kept it. Bobby Joe, you put that right back where you found it. I wouldn't think of prying into it. Probably locked anyway. No, Mr. Mom, see? That is Betty Joe's private diary. Now put it back. Okay. On the other hand, if anything happened to Betty Joe and there was a clue in the diary and I didn't read it, I'd never forgive myself. You give, give it here. <laughs> oh, that, these are my baby's own personal thoughts, and nobody should pry into them. Put it back. <laughs> of course, I don't have to read the whole diary. I could just read the last page. And that's a mother's duty. Give it here. <laughs> a mother should have thumb trust in her daughter. Well, I'm not her mother. Now, Billy Joe, what are you doing? Bobby Joe, you put this back where you found it. <laughs> and that goes for dogs, too. 
Yes, I mean you. Well, so far, no note, but her green dress is missing. And her high heels. A green dress? She never wears that to school. Looks like she did today. She's crazy about that dress. I know. She thinks it makes her look sexy. Oh, dear. Well, let's not get excited. Just sit calmly and uh, try to think. <laughs> I've got it. What? what? Play rehearsal. No, oh, Mom. Too early. They don't even have tryouts till October. Cheerleader practice. Uh-uh. That starts next week. She was practicing cartwheels yesterday, getting in shape. Club me. <laughs> That's right. No. Too early. Well, don't just sit there. If you've got an idea, say so. <laughs> Too bad he can't talk. He probably knows. Yeah, she tells him everything. He used to tell me everything. Here, here, what are you doing? <laughs> That's Betty Joe's notebook. He's trying to tell us something. Take it away from him. He'll tear it. Notes on world history. Reasons why Napoleon was defeated at Waterloo. Oh, you're a great help. We're worried oh, sick about... That isn't what he's trying to tell us. Look what's written all over the margin. Mrs. Betty Jo Latimer. Mrs. Betty Latimer. Mrs. Peter Latimer. Well, that doesn't... Matter. Who's Peter Latimer? <laughs> oh, he's just a new boy in town trying out for high school baseball team. Betty Jo Latimer, Mrs. Peter Latimer. Wow, she sure flipped over him. Oh, that doesn't mean anything. All girls do that. <laughs> oh, and I thought she was just clowning. Saturday, we were making the beds. She took the bedspread number seven, you know, the lace one, and draped it over her head and marched up and down singing the wedding march. <laughs> just feast your eyes on this. Now, there's an antique if I ever seen one. How about it, young fella? When's the last time you saw one of them? Don't think I ever saw one of these before. <laughs> Why's he got a clock in his stomach? So as it can tell time, knucklehead. It ain't working just right, but I think I can fix it. Oh, now here's another fascinating item. Did you find a note, Kate? Well, not a note exactly. It was just, well, the whole thing's ridiculous. Well, she'll probably send you a telegram after it's all over. <laughs> after what's all over? Why, the wedding. That's the way they usually do it. I swear for it, if you ain't got a one-track mind. Well, I'm just not going to worry about it yet. There must be a reasonable explanation for all this. And when we find it out, we'll all have a good laugh. <laughs> OK, listen. How about setting aside this section of the lobby for our antique shop? Our what? Our antique shop. After all, we got all them priceless antiques and objects dart. We got to have a place to display them. Objects what? Dart. That's French for statues and stuff. Hey, I'm thinking of calling it ye olde antique shoppy. How does that strike you? Well, it doesn't. Because all these priceless treasures are going in ye olde trashy baskets. But Kate, you're passing up a fortune. Please, please, Uncle Joe. All I can think of right now is Betty Joe. It just isn't like her to do a thing like this. She's always so sensible and so considerate. There must be something that I'm forgetting I'm supposed to remember. Uh... Mom? Yes, Bobby Joe? I think I remembered something I was supposed to forget. What? <laughs> well, it probably doesn't mean anything, but Betty Joe borrowed back her nightgown. The one she got for her birthday. Pink one? With the ruffles? And the lace? What for? I don't know. I think I do. Oh, shut up, Floyd. You don't know nothing. Maybe not, but I got a good idea. She probably wanted to sleep in it. Of course she wanted to sleep in it. What else would she do with a nightgown? Where would she be is the question. Why, wherever she was open to. <laughs> that did it. Charlie, I got to get into town. Will you take me? Well, we're heading the other way towards Pixley, but I reckon we could back it into Hooterville. Oh, please, Charlie. I got to stop Betty Joe before it's too late. Sorry to make you fellas back the train all the way into Hooterville. We're glad to do it, Kate. I'll go get up a little steam. Won't take but a minute. Thanks, Charlie. Now, don't you worry, Kate. Everything's going to turn out just fine. Oh, you really think so, Floyd? Why, sure. 
Betty Jo's a sensible, level-headed girl. She's going to make a fine mother. <laughs> hey, that's going to make you a grandmother, ain't it? <laughs> What's wrong, then I'll tell you who Sarah should give me. Oh, I'll call you back, Sarah. Oh, it's just dreadful, Sam, dreadful. And now, Kate, get a hold of yourself. Betty Jo ran off and got married. Oh, good gosh, when did this happen? I don't know. She, she left the house this morning without saying goodbye, without even leaving me a note. Oh, now, take it easy, Kate. Uh, Betty Jo's a level-headed, conscientious little girl. She wouldn't do anything drastic without telling you. Oh, tell me more, Sam, tell me more. Well, she came in here today right after school, like she always does, reaching into the candy jar, and that nice young fella, Pete Latimer, smiling down at her, holding her suitcase, while she dug out some licorice for them to eat on their way to the state line. State line? Suitcase? Oh, holy Toledo. You're a mother-in-law. Oh, my poor baby. It isn't much of a diamond, Pete, but it sure served its purpose. <laughs> Let's see you snag this one. How was that, Betty Joe? Great. With a little more practice, she'll be another Pee Wee Reese. Who's she? <laughs> she is a he, silly. Uh, this better be the last one, Betty Joe. If I don't get that car home pretty soon, that'll kill me. Well, if you hadn't insisted on coming all the way out here, we could have gotten in a lot more practice. Oh, gosh, Betty Joe. I couldn't take a chance on practicing in town. What if the fellas were to see me being coached by a girl? Well, you won't have to worry about that anymore. You're ready for the tryouts. Well, here's the last one. Hey, Joe, are you all right? <laughs> Mrs. Latimer? Yes? Huh. I'm Betty Joe's mother. Oh? I'm, 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 I'm Kate Bradley. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Bradley? <laughs> I'm Peter Latimer's mother-in-law. Oh, how nice. Peter Latimer's mother-in-law? <laughs> oh. Peter Latimer is my son. Well, he's also my son-in-law. Your son and my daughter just eloped over the state line. Oh, this is a mistake. Peter couldn't have eloped. He has all that homework to do. Why, he never... Wait a minute. If he was going to do all that homework, why did he ask to borrow his father's car? Uh-huh, you see, car, suitcase, state line. Listen to me, Mrs. Latimer. Right now, there are two innocent children out there being pelted by uncooked rice. <laughs> oh, my poor son. Your poor son? What about my poor daughter? Your poor daughter has talked my poor son into the poorhouse. His career is finished. He'll never be a plumber. <laughs> what about my daughter? She's a straight A student. A girl who never got to go to college, married to a boy who never got to be a plumber. It's all down the drain. <laughs> oh, I've lost my only son. Oh, Mrs. Latimer, don't feel that way. You, you may have lost a son, but... You have gained the fastest shortstop in Hooterville. <laughs> what good's a shortstop when Peter's socks need darning? <laughs> hey, maybe we can still catch him. It's worth a try. Okay, let's get in the car and head for the state line. <laughs> no car. <laughs> well, there's only one thing for us to do. You're right. We'll just have to look on the bright side of things. <laughs> ah! Couldn't you find out anything at all? One thing, and I wish I hadn't. Pete Latimer's missing, too. His mother is worried sick. Barred his father's car this morning, and he isn't home yet. 
only those crazy kids would give us some word. Mom, did you notice? We scrubbed out the closet real good and put back the things you told us to. We didn't know what to do about the party stuff. A and then we carried our own stuff to our rooms. Betty Jo's, too. Betty Jo. Hey, Kate, us human beings are a little hungry. We haven't got clocks for a stomach like he has. Oh, Uncle Joe, you got a clock for a stomach, all right. And it's always set for mealtime. <laughs> I guess you kids are starved. I'll go out in the kitchen to see what I can rustle up, huh? <laughs> Wait a minute. Listen. Yeah. Mom, oh. it's Betty Joe and some boy. He's carrying her up the walk. How are you know? <laughs> oh, thank goodness she's all right. Who's she with? He's awfully good looking. Oh, we're almost there. Yeah. <laughs> it's Pete Latimer. Why do you suppose he's carrying her? Gosh, Mom, they do. Now, 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 let's all get away from the window. And when they go in, not a word, let them tell us. I know, let's all put on our party hats. Party hats? <laughs> well, hello, everybody. Uh, Betty Jo. Hello. Well, what's going on? Is it a party? Well, why didn't somebody tell me? Because you weren't around, that's why. And it ain't a party. We just been cleaning out the closet. Oh, <laughs> well, listen, everybody. I'd like you to meet Pete Latimer. Pete, this is my family. My mother, my uncle Joe, and my sisters, Bobby Joe and Billy Joe. How do you do? Well, uh, don't just stand there. Come on in. <laughs> oh, watch out for that. <laughs> Might help if you'd put Betty Joe down. Uh, sure. Uh, where? Well, how about right there? Well, could somebody uh, clear out a chair or something? Oh, Bobby Joe, help me out. That's fine. Uh, is that all right, Betty Joe? Oh, just fine. You're sure you're comfortable? Oh, absolutely. Can I get you anything? Can't think of a thing. Uh, Betty Joe? Yes, Mom? Uh, if you are sure you are comfortable. Oh, I am. Uh, would you mind telling us what this is all about? Oh, I forgot. You don't know. I twisted my ankle. It don't look swollen. No, it doesn't. It looks perfectly all right to me. And where did all of this take place? When Pete and I were fielding grounders over at Schroeder's Flats. You see, uh, Pete didn't... Well, frankly, uh, Betty Joe was coaching me. Well, I didn't want the fellas to know. Schroeder's Flats. That's why you went over the state line. Well, sure, Mom. Why else would we? Well, never mind. <laughs> Uncle Joe, uh, would you show Pete your antiques while I get supper ready? Come on, girl. Oh, yeah. You know anything about antiques, son? Uh, no, sir. Well, that's too bad. I'm looking for somebody to help me out with the antique business. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some more beans? <laughs> Betty Joe, you can teach me about baseball, but when it comes to food, well, I can coach myself. <laughs> I'm sure glad you folks let me stay for supper. Wait a minute. We know you kids were practicing baseball, but we still don't know why you took along the suitcase. Well, I had my ball and glove and school books and my green dress and, and nightgown to take to the cleaners and my shoes to take to the repair shop. So I put them all in the suitcase. Like I said in my note. Note what note? The one on my pillow, where I always leave notes. Don't look now, but I think we just found the note. <laughs> you naughty boy. Pie, anyone? Except you. Don't be mad at him, Mom. <laughs> Good night, Mrs. Bradley. Good night, Pete. I'll see you to the door. <laughs> see you tomorrow, Pete. Sure thing. Bye. You kind of like Pete, don't you? Oh, he's just a boy. I'm teaching how to play baseball, that's all. Mm -hmm. Good night, Mom. Wait a minute. I thought you sprained your... Uh... Yield fast, didn't it? <laughs> Go <to bed. laughs>
junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.